afternoon, good evening from wherever you are. I want to welcome you again on Ugenet Crosswords. Today is our last Saturday this year, 2019. Well, I, I want to say that 2019 has been a great year in different ways. We have had uh, different guests here on Ugenet Crosswords. Every Saturday we've had, uh, di you know, different discussions, different main topics that happened back in Uganda. So the year technically has been a very wonderful year in both a positive and a negative way, depending on where you're located right now. But if you don't mind, please share with us where you're watching us from. And I want to thank you again for always watching Comfire Television, the leading media network for Africans here in the diaspora. We are based in the United States, and that's why we always, you know, Many people ask me, why do you use English on Uganda Crossroads? Why don't you use one of any of the local languages back in Uganda? And I would say that because we serve a very wide community, we cannot uh, use a language that cannot be understood by everyone. But I want to thank you so much again for always being part of us. Well, today is a different setting, um, simply because the year is ending and we want to look in, through it. What happened, uh, which stories made sense to us, like the major stories uh, throughout the year. And I'm joined by uh, Sarah Joy Bakanasa, Richard Miyombia. So we are always here. This is the, the main team of Uganda Crossroads. So we always come here and discuss uh, the different uh, stories that happen in Uganda. But guys, um, we are in a week of Christmas and uh, so many stories have happened uh, throughout you know, Christmas time. Of course, good and bad. We've seen people dying and, and others just celebrating. People give, coming out with different comments on different issues. So this week to me, uh, it was really um, a great week. Uh, I had some kind of Christmas, so I don't expect you guys to ask me how was my, my, my Christmas. My Christmas was really good. So let me start with uh, uh, Richard. Richard, how was your Christmas? No, I worked on Christmas. I, I want to be honest to you. I worked on Christmas. You <laughs> did not have time with the family. You had to go back to work on Christmas? No, you know, this, this chain of business we are doing. Can that's you... when people make more money. Yeah. You, oh, have, okay. you have to work. Otherwise, you will not pay bills. We, that's why we are working hard to go back home. I think I'm just getting lazy nowadays because I was on vacation for two weeks. Uh, Sarah, how was your, your, your Christmas? Did you have anything new? Did you enjoy it? What, what happened? I did. I enjoyed my Christmas. I rested a little bit. I had time to myself and um, energy renewed and um, I'm good. What made it more interesting? Um, we, we, had a, we, had, we had one of the most interesting part was that... Uh, uh, we, we just learned actually that uh, Honorable Robert Chagrin was in, in town. Uh, did you guys have the get you know to share Christmas with him or what, what happened? Just give me a brief story about it. Were you together or it was just a private? Uh, he was um, basically he was in town to to just take a break and relax with his family. He had uh, his children around, all the children, his wife. And we must understand he, he really runs a busy schedule back home. So it's understandable if he doesn't get enough time with his kids back home. Maybe he's coming in when they're sleeping. He leaves be, when they're preparing for school. And some of them, like Solomon, is in boarding school. Right. So you, I think they don't have enough time with their dad. So this, uh, and this is the festive season. So, and uh, he's having a, a more busy 2020 because he's going on with consultations. And after consultations... He has uh, campaigns coming up sooner or later. So I think it was a good moment for him to take a break with his entire family and, you know, and uh, enjoy Christmas like any other person. All right. So uh, it was a great time for you guys. I guess you, you enjoyed. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I had fun with friends and we were just celebrating and, and having fun. So you guys, uh, this year has been really great. Like I said at the show, uh, they have, we have had so many stories politically that have impacted the, the growth or uh, may, maybe problems that Uganda is facing today. We have seen uh, President Museveni working against uh, corruption and uh, he's doing a great job. Today we, we just got a new report of somebody asking money from him. So we don't know whether it's part of exercising what he was talking about or it was a leak from State House or it was just a general uh, letter that came out out of nowhere. So those are some of the things that we, you know, we are going to look into. But let's look at what was the main story for you, uh, if I start with you, Richard, uh, this year? What was the main story for you that you really felt like, oh, things are going to be great, things are going to be tight, things are going to be nice uh, since the year started? You know, to me, um, 
there are a number of things that happened with me. One, uh, the corruption thing, uh, of course, President Seven. I like the way he came out and said, you know what, enough is enough. Uh, we need to stop corruption. We need to end it. And being a president of the country, that was very interesting for him to come up. So let me ask you, Richard, uh, let me start with you. What was the main story for you? Actually, I'm going to ask you two stories, but give me one first for what happened in 2019, according to you. No, no, uh, 2019 was so interesting to me. As we are still in 2019. But for the first time, Museven has realized that he's going to lose power. That's the main story for me because before he thought he was invisible. No one could shake him, no one could get, put him out of power. But by the beginning of the year to the end of now the year, if you see everything that they are doing right now, look at the judgment they just, they just did now. We shall talk about it. I don't know, but for the first time, he realized that he's leaving power. And it's true he's going to leave power. All right. So, uh, Saras, I want to get, get back to you. Uh, what, was the main, what has been your main story throughout this year? I mean, we're having just a couple of days to go to out of it. So, of yeah. So, what has been your main story this year? I think um, my biggest highlight this year would be one or two. One is uh, the momentum the People Power Movement has picked. Because uh, from last year, if you had um, President Museveni, him even talking about by 2021, there would be no opposition. And uh, some of the opposition leaders had no, even those in the movement, had no faith in the People Power Movement. They thought it was something that had come up a little bit after um, OTT and it was going to die off. But the momentum, we've seen uh, Ugandans worldwide coming up and showing really good support. It is the first time we have Ugandans all over the world, you know, for one standing up and saying we really demand change and want to support. And um, so it's been a good year. It's been a good year in terms of now we know Ugandans want change, not only those back home, but those also living abroad. That was a big highlight. And also having someone now we believe in is, uh, because before we used to have a problem with uh, people coming up from opposition one to oppose seventy because most of them have an history with him. They've been in the bush with him or they've served him. Uh, some, and uh, he feels they are indebted to him. But we have someone who has a clean slate. He has never worked from seven years, has never been with him. So at least we have a good chance. And he's one of us. He resonates with 85% uh, of the population. He's a young person. He's, he understands the problems of young people. He does not belong in the generation of President Museveni. This people are so detached from what is happening in the, in the current you know, generation. So that has been really good. And... Uh, and uh, we are blessed to have uh, Honorable Chagulani. And um, the other highlight of this year is the panic of President Museveni because uh, you've seen him. I've never seen President Museveni panicking. I've never seen President Museveni acknowledging that he's at the verge of losing power than in this year 2019. And I think 2020 is going to be more even serious and bigger than this because you've seen him, um, you've seen him contradict himself. One time he mentioned that Bobby Wine should focus on singing. You've seen uh, before Christmas, I think in December, uh, he, he's, he released a song that is even worse. We thought uh, Fresh Daddy was worse. Museven is the worst. He, I don't know whether he's singing, whether he's talking, whether he's crying. He has gone to that extent of even releasing music when he said Bobby Wine should stick to music. He should leave politics to those who understand and politics. So he's really telling us we've had him, you know, give uh, positions to the likes of Full Figure, to the likes of Butcherman, Abiru Waguru, Asatu Wansi. So he's, we've seen President Seven make a fool of himself in so many things. And, and, and the epitome of everything was when he walked against himself. He's the most corrupt human being we know in Uganda. He defends the corrupt. He appreciates them. He gives them position, uh, positions. And himself is corrupt. So for him to mock Ugandans by working against himself that is working against corruption, it's, um, for me, those are highlighting moments. But those are signs to show that, uh, you know, the, those are last kicks of a dying horse. President M7 is going. It is a matter of time. He's going to leave power. I think to me, uh, the, the, main, um, the main story, actually I have like three or four, but one of them is uh, the Bank of Uganda money scandal. The, 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 I think it was in 90 billion that was printed out. And up to today, we don't know where that money was taken. So I, I felt like the country is like living in a jungle where one says, okay, we are going to do this. And then the other one says, okay, we will think about it. And somebody else comes up and says, okay, we, are, we have already done it. So what, what we saw with that money is we don't know where that money went. 
We don't know whether the Bank of Uganda cleared it up or it's still in maybe in the coffers of State House under the anti-corruption unit or anything. So we tried to dig deep into it, but we didn't get any results out of what was going on. So that was very interesting for me. And, and, and then when we talked about um, uh, the corruption, uh, the work against corruption, one, two things I, I liked about that movement was that the president came out to say that, you know what, enough is enough. We need to fight against corruption. And, and, I, and I respected that move. However, when he made the cabinet reshuffle and the same ministers who were corrupt in the previous, you know, cabinet, and then he reintroduced them again, I was like, may maybe this guy's just, uh, you know, people hate me when I use the word guy, but in American settings, just it means man. So w when, when, he, when he said that we are fighting corruption and again, he brings up the same people who are corrupt, who have been uh, indicted and, and cited in different places, I was like, okay, now let's go again. So some cabinet, some everything. But, uh, you know, like what you guys said. And, uh, and again, it's, it's something that uh, should show you. I don't think President Seven organized the walk to corruption. That was, I think it was organized by Balam. Balam is a businessman. I don't, you know, I always give him kudos for looking out for new business for him to make money. I don't think Mr. Seven organized that. But um, it's absurd that even people who organize such things uh, are Ugandans and uh, they should be able to give counsel to, to the president and uh, help him understand what is going on in the country. For President Mr. Seven to claim he's working, because you do not, uh, for what is happening in Uganda, after so many cases of corruption, of which at the end of it they lead to President Mr. Seven, President Mr. Seven shouldn't be working. If President Seveni wants to show Ghanans that he wants to do something or he wants to end corruption, he should prosecute. They must, the people who are involved in corruption should be prosecuted. They should be taken away. We should have ways of recovering his man, this money they've stolen. At least let's start with one. At least if President Seveni wanted us to, at least to believe that uh, he really wants to fight corruption. On that day in Kololo, he should have started by at least telling us what happened to the 90 billion. It should tell us that uh, this is what happened. And just give us one success story because we know 90 billion came in and it was unaccounted for. Give us one success story for us to believe and know that the president is doing something that he wants to stop this. You saw, you, and uh, at Kololo, you saw contradicting statements coming from Olanya. Right, Everyone was looking at themselves. The people who are working against corruption had tummies that are, you know, these guys have eaten so much that they cannot even walk. Maybe they wanted to exercise a little bit. But again, look at uh, there are things, um, I think, as people, are, as Mr. Seven was looking at, are walking against corruption as he termed it, you should look at, I looked at the security detail of uh, President Mr. Seven. It was as long, it was, and I'm like, what is he scared of? Well, he, he has he been in power for 37 years. He's the president of a country who is supposed to, to no, be but, uh, protected. He, in, in just he in needs to be protected. Happens. He needs to be protected, but from who? He's been a president who has served Ugandans well. If he has really served Ugandans well and they love him and they love what he has done, why is he ha having all that big detail? Because, he's, because first of all, when you look at the, sec the budget for security for presidents, uh, the state house budget for security, it is much more than the budget of some ministries you have in Uganda. But um, the other thing also I must mention and talk about, look at the current reshuffle, you talked about it, the right. current reshuffle, yeah. President Seven. Most of the but, and again, this should be something, and uh, for people who are viewing us and uh, watching this program, they must understand, President Museveni is known, to, um, and you have to be careful as you get, and President Museveni is not ready to go, you're going to force him to leave. Because if really President Museveni has been listening to the cries of Ugandans and the cries of uh, the young generation of people who uh, constitute the 75 percent to be involved in what is happening in the government you would not have a cabinet of most of them are over the age of 40. at least present even if you wanted to involve the young generation because there are so many there are so many young potential people look at his uh, cabinet ministers you have 70 75 you know that is a group the likes of his wife the likes of um, he brings back more this Ali and all those guys. Those are guys who sleep in, um, you've seen uh, Presco where you have state address, addresses and uh, they are sleeping. So he's not willing. He's willing, basically he's bringing back the old guards. If you wanted to show Ugandans a little bit that he's been listening, 
to the young but, people. But it had to change some some ministers. Uh, we know Tumewas is out of his office. We know. But it doesn't matter. He has reshuffled him to another office. You know? He has taken him to another office. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where he has taken him. But he's having. He's basically. He hasn't done anything. He would have been more. You know, if you wanted to show that he wants to involve, because the problems he having is having now, it is the generation. It is people who have been born in the 80s, lower, that are demanding for change. That's the majority of Ugandans. He would have been, you know, his cabinet would see something. At least let's have some cabinet ministers that are of the ages of 30. There are so many Ugandans with potential. They're educated. Ugandans are educated. They've gone to school. They have degrees. They lack jobs. And most of the, you know, you're going to tell me all these ministers have experience. But uh, what has ex the experience helped us? You've seen most of them have failed. You know, they've failed completely the ministries they run. Let's get in some young blood and see how they can do. Because young blood, they come in with potential. They want to but, prove themselves. But, uh, uh, so uh, they uh, will be able to, you know. I, I want to ask you, sorry, this question. And, and of course, I'm going to ask the viewers too. Uh, when you see a, a man like uh, uh, Minister Sam Kutesa being reinstated as a, a Minister of for Foreign Affairs, what does that tell you? We have seen Sam Kutesa different corruption scandals over the years, inclusive of the recent one with the Chinese guy. So what does that tell you? I want to hear, uh, hear from you people who are watching, you who is watching us live right now uh, from probably Facebook, one of our media platforms. Uh, tell us what you think about why ministers like Sam Kutesa, who has been involved who has involved himself in different corruption scandals. He's still a minister, and he's still in the new cabinet. So I want to come back to you then. Yeah, I've but got you to forget you. Kutesa is uh, an in-law. Kutesa's daughter is married to Mohozi. That is his wife. So this kind of, that's why I'm telling you, Ghanans, you have to look at this. Uh, you, you should, uh, you, you should uh, when you're looking at uh, what is happening in government right now and what Museveni is doing right now, don't look at it. Be, uh, be, uh, don't, don't, uh, you should dissect everything and look at every angle of it. If he's willing to recycle Mo, Mo, Mo Kutesa, who has been in government, so many scandals, you've seen him indicted, you've seen so many, you know, with the Chinese guy, the guy has been... Uh, prosecuted in the United States. That is enough to tell you, Museveni runs Uganda as a, a family business. This is his company. It is a company that has uh, a director, a CEO, and the wife. You know, they have positions in this country. They have, they've, they run it, basically they run it like a small company or an organization that belongs to them. That's enough because if for you really want to, and that again, again goes back to corruption. If he really wants to end corruption, he wouldn't be bringing back Kutesa. He should put him aside. Kutesa is over 60, 70 years. Right. This guy should be retiring. And this is enough to tell you, Museveni is not willing to include the young generation. All right. Sorry, I'm into, because in these, right. all these guys should be retired. So, Richard, what does that tell you when, when you see such stories? You know, we, we, we almost discussed the same stories. The good thing is that today being the last Saturday of the year, we are now breaking down some of the major stories that are happening in the year. But you see the same guys in the same cabinet and everything is still the same. But does that tell you that maybe 2020 is going to be a little bit different? These guys are going to start up? No, no. For me, the most important thing that I saw in the cabinet reshuffle was this uh, Ugandan, Ugandan lady who, Betty Kamiya. You see, Museven made something. Museven is a very tricky man. He speaks what he's going to do. He said, for the good of the NRA, so this woman has worked hard to make sure that Kampala goes in line with what Museveni wants, because that's the fighting ground. The second thing is the see, Majez. You people, what, you, you don't know exactly why Majez was given the, the local government, because they, are, they, they have been, look, look at the case that happened recently, the, the judgment this week, Jeremandali. Illegal gerrymandering. This thing has been happening. Now they are going to do it to the extreme. So people power, coordinators and management, and we, we have to be alert, especially for these other people. It's, a, it's not a problem. We shall let But, but, but uh, you know, you mentioned about uh, Rafael Majez. Rafael Majez is considered one of the most intelligent members of parliament today we have in Uganda. So mm -hmm. him being selected to be representing the, the local gov government, yeah. he, he, I think he deserves to be in that seat. Yeah, because, because but the, 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 the actual purpose is to benefit NRM. But why? What they are going to do this year, this year, they are going to do more gerrymandering of the whole country. It's going to divide it and make sure that they get more seats in parliament. Remember now, they, they, they agree. Now they agree that people power is taking government. Honorable Chagwan is taking government. That you must be careful to make sure that he does not take the parliament. 
Remember what happened in Congo. We must avoid that scenario of Congo because what happened in, Co in Congo, there was a twist in, in the votes. The votes were stolen in favor of one of the opposition that was not radical to the president to keep his wills and his people. And then the second thing was the, the second thing was that they made sure they have the, the, the parliament, they control the parliament. It's the most important thing. That's why you see Majez in that position. They're going to do gerrymandering, split up the constituencies to make sure that they have more majority in the parliament. And Ugandans must be sure of this. Because if, if you look at the judgment, did it affect uh, this man, Basari, of, of, of Iganga? Is people power going to use his party or is going to use the FDC? And more, you have to be careful more of this man, uh, Mugisha Muntu. You must make sure people power coordinators take this note that Mugisha Muntu must not be supported. He must not win anything because his job is to make sure he denies the majority people power is going to have in parliament. All right, so, so I, I, I think I'll leave that to, to, the, to, the, to the audience that is watching us uh, to judge whether you believe that Mugisha Munt won't be a good guy to, to work with you guys or no, whatever no, you, you say. It, so, it, so, I want so, to bring you in. I purpose. wanted to add on a little bit about Majezi. Majezi, first of all, his appointment. Um, his appointment is not out of, uh, out of integrity is not out of uh, because he's a good guy or intelligent his appointment is a reward you know he, you're, if you remember he's done who brought in uh, in parliament the, the lifting of the term, term limit the age limit yes the age limit um he brought up the age limit because they had scrapped already the term limit and this was the only thing that was uh, going to ban president seven from standing again in 2021 so he brought it up and uh, definitely you saw what happened the movement caucus went to chankwanzi they met up they were given money since they are the majority in parliament it was able to be lifted so what do you do as president Museveni? You you reward him and give him an office because definitely that's the best they could do for him. But but you know, sorry, before before I actually leave that discussion, uh, you, you guys, especially the opposition, have uh, always complained about uh, the age limit thing and lifting and all that. But there was nothing that was done illegally. Everything was done legally. So what does that tell you guys? In you no, but uh, you don't you do not change your constitution because this constitution. If you look at what has been happening in Uganda, President Museveni every time. They've changed the constitution in their favor. The constitution, just look at what happened to the term limit. You had it properly stipulated in the constitution that uh, we are on a, only going to be voting for someone who is running for president should be running for three terms. And that was lifted again to suit President Seveni because that other time he wasn't going to stand because he had already stood for the three times. It is common sense. When it got to the age limit, they knew very well but that by, by 2021, President Seveni will be already 75. He cannot stand again as per the constitution of Uganda. What do they do? They lift the term limit. What are they going to do next? The next thing in the constitution, if Ugandans, because all this we are discussing, it comes down and sums down to Ugandans. It is entirely up to Ugandans to cause the change they want. Because what it's going to do next is uh, they might end up putting a clause in the constitution of uh, giving Museveni, you know, no term, they've taken away the term life presidency. And then next they could put on a, a clause where they, you know, they strip the, the voting completely because uh, in one it's giving him headache, it's making him run around like a headless chicken. So why vote? He's a lifetime president, let him stay. So that's why I'm telling you, Ugandans need to do something. And uh, yes, the pressure is on, but at the end of the day, we need a massive vote. It comes down to that. It comes down to that. Uh, I want to. I want to take you down to to something that is actually kind of like brand new. It's it's been. I've seen it on so, some of the social media platforms and all that. There is this uh, a member of parliament from Shima Municipality, uh, Edioda Tumwesije, who is asking for help from President Museveni over about eight eight hundred fifty million Ugandan shillings to bail him out of the dates that he cut during the campaigns in the probably uh, in the recent elections in, in Shima. Now, what does that tell you? Is the president supposed to be bailing out members of parliament who went for these seats because they knew they were going to serve people instead of asking for money to maybe help in delivering services in his constituency, he's asking for money to help him pay the dates that he incurred during elections. What does that tell you? I want to start with that, Richard. Does that tell you that and it was leaked. I don't know whether from state house or from just the public, but whatever it was leaked from, it 
gives us significant information over what's going on in the country. So, Richard, I want to, what's your take on that? Well, what we are fighting for in Uganda is democracy and equal rights. If you see a member of parliament going to run for a seat so that the NRM party wins it or the FDC and use such, such a money, such a money, it shows you how rotten the country is. What people power is going to do, I think, we are going to overhaul the system. There will be no bribery. You go to jail because we must put the... How can someone ask for such a money? It's true. They, they, they borrow money. They have to give out money. Give, go and give me the vote. Democracy in Africa has reached to, to the low point where someone's given a kilo of sugar or someone's given 10,000, 20,000, 20, 50,000 to buy his right to vote and cast a leader he wants in power to do the right thing. So it's now a business. Yes, they are going to bail him out or they might not bail him out. That's their own business. They have stolen enough money. But it shows you how rotten the system of the country is. What we are fighting for is the same rights of voting like in America. You don't have to be given money. You give someone money to go and vote, you go to jail. You manipulate votes for people who have cast, you go to jail. That is all rigid. You cannot do that. I saw it myself and I read, I read it in detail. It's totally bad for a country. How many people are in debt? Everyone's in debt. If someone's going to run for an election, he has to get money. No, you have to go out and show people, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to fight for. This is what we need to do, honestly. But and the, then people vote you. But the president, the, the president pledged to, to support this, this gentleman. Yeah, so and he was there. The he was there. Responsibility for no, him but to, uh, to the, the president, pledge. That's what I'm telling you. Museveni runs Uganda like his own company. It is not the risk because Museveni doesn't have his own money. This is taxpayers' money. This is money that comes from Ugandans. This is money that is taken, this is part of the money taken from Ugandans. When even, they, you know, it is money. Ugandans don't have jobs, but with the little they earn, the taxes that are taken from him. This is money that is, the president is going to be using to clear debts for a member of parliament. For, first of all, you know, let me just break it down. This is a member of parliament who has been in parliament for some time and is earning, they earn roughly, you know, with allowance, you know, they increase the allowances, they earn roughly 30 million a month. If really he wanted to pay off the debtors, minus again putting that burden on taxpayers' money, he should have, at least just imagine if he was able to pay maybe 15 million every month from the money earned from parliament. He's a minister as well, he has, he has an allowance he's supposed to be getting. They have sitting allowances in parliament. These guys have uh, literally, when I read that, I'm like, this could be one of them. We are lucky that this leaked, but how many of them have gone to the president and used taxpayers' money to clear their debts? Inc inclusive of uh, you, the people in your position. Yeah, whatever, whoever they are, whoever they are, whether you're in posi opposition, whether you're in a room and you run to the, to the president to clear your debt, President Seven doesn't have his own money. This is taxpayers' money he's using. And when we put out an outcry and say we totally need change, this country has gone to the dogs, this is what exactly we mean. Whether you're in a position, if you're running to the president, people are running politics now like a commercial, it's like a commercial business or an entity. You go into an election knowing you do not have money, and again, because we've commercialized elections, whereby people are not voting you because of your potential, people are voting you because of what you've given them. Just imagine, we are losing so many people out there who would have been in parliament just because they have potential or they're willing to do something to help their people. And you're taking in people who have gone to, you know, who have gotten, who have gone to parliament just because they bought votes. And when they get in there, all they focus on is how do I pay back the votes? How do, do I pay back my debts have accumulated over this period of time of campaigns? Because, and that's, this is the same reason you have. When President Museveni, when uh, Majesty brought in parliament, the lifting of the age limit, President Museveni met all members of parliament. They were given how much money? Was it 150 million or? Yeah. They were given a lot of money. Just imagine a man who has a debt of uh, 850 million. Would he refuse to vote yes? Especially if he's given 150 million. So this is really absurd. And again, I will say again, it's going to come back to Uganda. If the power is in your hands to claim back. We, you know, we have the numbers. We have the 85%, the numbers that are going to vote. Because at the end of the day, so many things are going to rise up. You're going to say, oh, they have the guns, or oh, they are going to do this, but you have the vote. And you can determine if you want to the I was looking at the, 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 the budget. I was looking at it. There was a, uh, uh, the, the, the report I, I read from this Minister of Finance. They are, they are going to slice the budget of the government to fund the next election. 
the amount of money that they are going to put in the next election has never been put in an election. But, but this is going to be, also you guys in opposition are going to put in a lot of money because you want to host President Museven. So it should be no, a fair some, There is money, money in elections. The you no, the, the you constitution of Uganda does should, not allow Ugandans to get money from overseas. That's the law that Museven put in when he was making the constitution. But, but, but still, it doesn't matter whether you guys in the diaspora are going to fund elections, especially those who support people power. But what I'm saying is, even the opposition... Yeah, you need, you, need you need money. You need you need money. You need money in elections. But uh, what I can explain what what kind of money do you need? Whoever is running, they don't run. They run with the, you, they have coordinators. They have mobilizers. These people need to get where they're going. They need fuel. They, you need flyers. You need a number of things for you to run a, a campaign. But the money we are again against is money you give to bribe voters. That money in any election is not allowed. Because if it was a free and fair election where you run it on merit and say, okay, the money you have to run an election is to go out and meet the voters. Talk to the voters and let them decide. But you have people. And again, it's going to come back to Uganda. Because if someone is going to buy your vote for only 500 shillings, or many, they give you a bar of soap that is maybe 2,000 shillings, and they buy your vote, and at the end of the day, a man, your vote is sold at 1,000 or 2,000 shillings. A guy is claiming back 850 million. You have something wrong in your head. Because at the end of the day, someone is going to, you know, pay you 2,000 shillings. At the end of the day, they are going to go back to the president and claim 850 million. And they will come back to you after four years or after five years. Is the bar of soap going to help you for five years? So you're going to need to, they but need to work up. You know, no, I was looking. I, 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 I was looking. Before you come, in, before you come in, Richard, uh, I want to pause the same question that Sarah was raising here. Uh, that if you Ugandans, do, do you think that Ugandans are ready to go into elections without being bribed? Because this is an ongoing process. So do you think, I'm going to read at least four comments from what you guys tell me here and tell us, do you think Ugandans have reached the level of not being bribed? To vote for someone. Let me, let me, I'll, I'm going to add on something from what you said. The bribe, you're not going to take away the bribing from elections. Ugandans have been experiencing that. But what we are asking Ugandans, receive that money. Receive that money. Because first of all, this is your taxpayers' money. You're going to be bribed with 1,000, 2,000, 50,000, receive that money. But it is entirely, the power to choose the right person is upon you. Because on the voting day, no one is checking your ballot with you. It is you ticking alone. It is you ticking alone. What we need to inform Ugandans, you're not indebted, indebted to someone. Ugandans need to understand everything you're given as a bribe, you're entitled to, to it. This is your taxpayer's money. You've only gotten 50,000. Full figure got 200 million. She was updated, upgraded from the slums of, 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 uh, of, na, of, na, of much India. Now she's living in an apartment. So you must understand, don't feel you're indebted to Museven to vote for him when you only got 50,000, when the likes of full figure, a single individual got 200 million and a car. So you got and enjoy this money. When you receive it, eat it. But when you get to the vote, be smarter. This is 2020. We're going into 2020. That's another decade. Be smarter. Receive the money. You should not refuse it. It's part of your money. But it's coming back to you in form of a bribe. Receive the money, but when you get to voting, vote the right person. It Which is as simple as that. Yeah. My first car I bought, I even remember the number of UWR 5225. It was a campaign car for 1980 election. Obote put a lot of money. The, you remember DP had no money. Right. Very little money. He had just the money from, that he got, they got from outside for, for, for logistics. But the UPC government with Paolo Mwanga and Milton Obote bought cars. I've never seen cars that were, were bought in the 1980 election. I saw them. My first car was out of the, the, the chairman of UPC. So for you were Masaka. part of the brand No, no, no. I bought a car. I bought a car. My first car, I bought a car. That's a 120Y. It was an election car. But they used so much money. They used so much fear. They, they used so much gender, gender mandarin with this, this UPC money, this uh, Luero, 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 Luero constituency, this is Sebilumbi, all these things. They used everything they could do, but the 1980 election was won by the people of Uganda that stood up and got the vote. The 1980 election, if we do the same, that people are going to sacrifice everything they have and they got the, this election, like we did in 1980 when we were young, we are going to take him 
as we, they took Obote in 1980. All right, so and guys, I, you know, yesterday yeah, I was. Um, I want to go and read I, a few hold up a second. From the I was last, watching. Last the, I was watching uh, today morning. I was watching Full Figure on NTV, where she was. I know they sprouted bottles on her, but uh, she was saying people were asking her for the money. Yes, Ugandans, when Full Figure comes to you especially people who live in uh, around Kampala because that's the area she was given to man, demand for that money. Full figure received 200 million. Don't even let her open her mouth to speak to you if she does not give you part of the money. She cannot elevate herself alone. You've seen her take pictures with money. If full figure, if she's going to meet 50 people, let make sure she has given you at least 100,000 each before even she sits down to speak because she's not going to become rich alone when Ugandans do not have money. All Collect right. that money, it belongs to you, but you know exactly who let me, to Let me vote. read a few comments here from uh, uh, when I posed the question, are uh, Ugandans ready to go into any general election without being bribed? Now, let me read a couple of comments that came from you, uh, our viewers uh, from our Facebook page. Uh, Henry Prince, Henrik say that the greatest challenge for Ugandans in, is M7 has impoverished and fooled people. Now, that's one of the comments uh, before you guys step in. Then the road the Rome says Ugandans are so poor and not to want bribes, and it's the opportunity they get. But that alone is a big problem. Not all Ugandans can take a bribe and don't submit to it. Now let me read you uh, Ezekiel Kadu says money matters in politics of Uganda. NRM use money and set machinery to win elections. So guys, I I want to I want to come back to you. You see what people's views are. They they really believe that it's very hard. When I look at the majority, they really believe it's very hard for them not to engaging, you know, uh, uh, accepting bribes. It so, is, that's why we said it is okay. We so, understand Ugandans have been impoverished by this regime. Collect that money. But on the voting day, I have not seen people, I have not seen because they were, you were given a, a, a bar of soap, I have not seen that they follow you to the bar, you know, to the, to, when you're casting your vote. So we are asking Ugandans, you need to be smarter than how you were in 2016. Collect the money and don't feel indebted to anyone because it is your money. This money is not coming from Seveni's pocket. This money is not coming from Seveni's ad and money. This is your taxpayers' money they're using. Because just look, ask yourself, why do we have a lot of inflation after the election? Why are we, you know? So this is your money. Don't feel ashamed or don't feel, you know, don't, don't feel sad and bad that, oh, I'm feeling bad that I collected this money. This is your money. Collect it. But when you're voting, you need to cast your vote differently. So, and your guardians must understand, in 2021, what is going to make the change? As much as money is key and vital and state machinery in elections, Museveni, if you overwhelmingly vote against President Museveni and you vote, 80% of the vote goes to the opposition. Museveni cannot rig that vote. So Look at the parliamentary elections that have happened where they've been highly guarded. You've had out of state machinery. You've had everything, but people came out and voted in big numbers. They've made it completely difficult for the president to vote. Because at least you have examples to look at. Look at what happened in Chadondo where Bobby Wine won by 80%. Look at what happened in Bujiri. As much as a state machinery. Look at what happened in Arua. Even Kassidia, uh, Wadri Cassiano was not there. He was in but, prison. But, you, but you, you, know, you guys were defeated in Hoima. Like the entire team of opposition. Let's, let's look at it. No, we defeated. are not going to dwell on only one moment where we were defeated. Let's look at the successes. Because this is not the time for us to dwell on what we failed. It is time to look at the, the places where we won. How did we do it? We need to look at that. In Arua, Cassiano Wadri was in prison. His agents, were, most of them were, had been arrested. But the people of Arua went out and voted for him in massive numbers the voting was so the vote was so huge that uh, even in prison he managed to win right. because uh, so. because uh, Tipper would have won that election his opponent was in prison but uh, a vote that is a block vote in big numbers causes a difference so Ugandans must understand that you need at this point in time it the money it is your money but when you go to cast your vote vote the right person uh, Richard, you're, you're, yeah you're there, there are certain things I wanted to tell people especially people power coordinators if they are listening to us that they must know and get out to tell people a, and a, a, a counter to put election it's not a president giving a favor to the people of Uganda or the constitution of Uganda. It's the mandate of the international community. The people in the village must be told that this coming election, election is not an ordinary election. It's a liberation of the country. And the, the, what we need with the opposition, what we need right now with the people power need is to tell the people that we are not going to vote to change the president. No, we are going to vote as a mandate for Uganda 
in the international community. That's why we are going to win this war. Once the international community, like the look, I, I was I was in the 1980 election. We saw what happened. The the British Commonwealth Observer Group said the, the election was fair and fair. Knowing exactly what had happened, the rigging that was there, they said it was fair and fair because they feared because of what Britain did to Uganda and Milton Obote to get him out of power. They went and said it's fair and fair. What we need this time is the Commonwealth Observer Group and all other groups that are coming in the Ugandan election to say that this election is not free and fair. Then right. we, we start from so there. Let me, let me take you guys out of all that. Now, the year is almost ending uh, we do, do, towards Christmas, during Christmas period. You've always, since the year started, mm. have been saying that the, 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 the judicial system of Uganda is not working. It's, it's one of the fakers, it's one of everything. You've called it names. Uh, at least you guys, whenever we sit here and we talk about the judicial system of Uganda, you're like, it's a, 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 pr a private property of uh, uh, Mr. Museven, the president of Uganda. Now, recently, just a couple of days ago, six members of parliament their elections or their wins or their whatever were nullified by the judges. What does that tell you? Inclusive of your people power personnel, no, as Mani Baswari and Ujibi, but, uh, you see, uh, what does that tell you? It, it is so funny um, because one of the reasons I've read that uh, these constituencies were, were, were not, um, were not um, they were illegal. Right. Illegal constituencies. So before even we went into the election, then the Electoral Commission, through its lawyers and the, legi and the judiciary, know that these constituencies were illegal. Because at the end of the day, you see, as much as you want to say this, they were nullified because the constituencies were not constituted by that time, this is taxpayers' money. Whenever you're going to run an election, the Electoral Commission does not get money from us. This is taxpayers' money. And this is something to tell you. You know, I've never seen a government that is so wasteful than the government of President Museveni. They do not, you know, they've mastered their PhD or their experience has been in being wasteful. So you want to nullify elections for six members of parliament, of which, do you know how much money? Have they, I've even thought about how much billions of money went into organizing those elections that you want to nullify. Because for us, the issue is not uh, you taking out Basaji. We are going to go back and campaign for him and Basaji is going to come back to parliament. And some of the NRM candidates, uh, members of parliament, could even going to be, they are going to be, some of them could lose seats because uh, Ugandans, if they went in the other time and Ugandans had not woken up, it is getting worse right now. Some of them have seen they've come, they come from the West where you've had mudslides and all that. So it could even be worse for them. They could even lose seats because Ugandans are waking up right now. But we should look at how much money have we lost and where is the election, uh, Electoral Commission going to get more money? Because also these judges, if you can wake up and tell Dr. Besijet that, uh, that let him go to his own court, since he's the people's president. They should use common sense. They should be able to resolve this and we don't go back into an election. You have one year left because if you're going to have campaigns coming up in 2020 for these vacant you know, positions, and again, you're going to waste taxpayers' money, yet you're going to need money again in 2021, again, taxpayers. Basically, what is happening right now? Uganda and, but, the, but and, the, the, and, the, and the government... According, according to the ruling, they are nullified until the next general elections, which is, uh, I think... Uh, uh, very clear evidence that maybe there is something that has to be done then than now because they did it illegal according to the judges. But it's not their fault. The Electoral Commission, this is a, a body that runs with lawyers and all that. They should have sorted out this before they went into campaigns. They should have sorted this because this campaign, these guys did not just wake up out of the blue and planted themselves in parliament. You saw some of the campaigns were so contentious. They needed all the army and President Seven was there. So President Seven was in these areas campaigning, not knowing that these constituents were illegal or they did not exist. Or that. So, but uh, it comes down. May, what I'm looking at now, I'm not even looking at individuals, whether you identify them up to the next election. I'm looking at right now how people are wasting taxpayers' money every now and then. And uh, that's why I'm asking also the judges should use their common sense. This is taxpayers' money they are wasting. Whether you nullify an election right now, you're denying people the people all in those areas where the members of parliament, you're den where you've taken them away, you're denying them representation in parliament. You're denying them people to represent them. You're leaving these, uh, these uh, areas without, without representatives. But at the end of the day, you, uh, you've wasted. They went into this knowing 
they should have sorted out this problem before. And these are the problems we've been facing in Uganda. For example, I'll take you away a little bit from this. This is what exactly happened with the Duboa Hospital. A lot of money disappeared, and you saw, the, the and you saw the speak of Parliament wanting to investigate something after the money disappeared. And I wonder why didn't she? You know, they went into Parliament very everything was done chop chop, and they passed this money and they gave it out. Why didn't they investigate who was taking the money before even they gave out the money? The money ended up with a company that is selling furniture in Dubai. So this is what is, has been in, happening in Uganda. When people want to, you know, flee to Ugandans and steal from them, they do things, and then afterwards, you know, they come back and they want to do investigations. So I wanted to, is, I wanted to add on this something. This is not new with so, uh, the way things happen in Uganda. I, I'm, I'm, uh, let's analyze the ruling. Because I read the ruling, yeah. and then the, I read a law here. Uh, the, 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 the 2015 law. Right. So, first of all, the judges, are the judges waking up now to clean themselves because they know that people because, power is taking no, over no, 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 the no, government? No, you, you may blame the judges, but they're doing their job. No, You've been saying the no, judges no, are no, 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 no. The judges so, have been ruling in favor of Museven. So and recently... Do you disagree? Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a personal question. Mm -hmm. Do you disagree the ruling based on because they had to throw out some of your members? Or you disagree with the ruling because... You believe they're just waking it's, up it's, 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 it's a true ruling. I'll, I'll show you the evidence. It's a true ruling. But why now? Why now? Either they are saving their skin for the next government of people power that is coming into place, or, or Museveni, knowing that, it, because everyone now can see the, the, the way the life of Mr. Museveni is, who they have been protecting power for all these 30 years, the judges making uh, judgment in favor of Museveni, knowing that he's now living this life and there's going to be another person in place. Now they are cleaning up the mess. The second thing is Bigirimana. Bigirimana was put in the judiciary and the, 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 the judicial officers themselves, the judicial officers themselves said, we don't need this man. The permanent secretary, the minister of, minister of justice does not have this position of permanent secretary. And in seven deliberately ruled against the judges and put him there. Now, are they punishing the seven? Because this is the first time they have ever made all of them such a looting. Okay? But why? Why? Are they punishing the seven? Because, yes. because, because they are doing their job. No, 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 no. Look, look, at, the, look, look at the edge limit. The, the, the edge office. limit was... In, look, we are going to wait for the judgment in, 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 in this East African court for my name, the, the, the edge limit and its appeal and everything, most seven did it illegally. They ruled against the, 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 the people of Uganda and gave the favor to Museven. Why would they give the true judgment right now in Uganda? That's the question. Look, let me give you the notes that is, uh, I, I had. Let me, let me ask you as you're looking for that. Mm -hmm. uh, how, was, how was it done illegally, uh, before I bring in Sarah, how was it done illegally when the majority of the members of parliament uh, voted for the removal of the age limit bill, which no. was part of the constitution? No. No. How? And, and a tool, there were consultations made, and, and, and people had no, to... No, 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 no. Who, who, who is fooling who? So the member of parliament, when an issue comes, they are taken to Chiangkwans and they are brought to, to state house and say, you people, you are on the NRM ticket and this is what you do. This is what the NRM boss, the chairman wants you to do so that the NRM might continue with its revolution. That's good. You that's have to, good. That's it, is, is, it, it, is that justice? That's what we've seen in all political parties. No, 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 look, 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 I've been praying for this moment and now this moment is coming. In the new system, because I've been favoring the people of Uganda that to have a referendum so that we can change the entire political system, economic system, and everything, so that there's a check and balance. If we had the same system, like you see in America, where there's the, the, the House of Representatives and the Senate, where each one checks the other for faults, we would never have reached there. I can show you the law of 19, 2005. All right, so yes? as you're looking for that, I'll come back to okay. it. Okay. I want to finish up with this uh, before uh, our time runs up. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, again, one of the major stories for especially you guys who support people power, uh, Honorable Robert Chagulanyi was able to forward his document asking for permission to go and do consultations. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, were, he was accepted to do the job, to mm -hmm. go and do consultations, but there are also rules that guide him over what he has to do. He's not supposed to do public rallies and all that. What does that tell you now that we are going into 2020 where uh, campaigns are going to be tight? Uh, and, and everything's going to be tight. Money's going to be spent on everything. What does that tell you, Sarah, when you see that your candidate, the person you support, 
he's given those guidelines but remember we saw uh John Mugisha Mundu sitting in you know big numbers having people sitting in different rooms or halls the town halls and all that discussing the same issue or doing consultations what does that tell you when it comes to people power being given these tight guidelines during their consultation time consultations are consultations so if someone has um, a meeting in a in a hall that's a consultative meeting I think one of their guidelines, unless they want to have their cake and eat it, if you say you're not going to have public rallies, that's different. But uh, if uh, they are going to come for Honorable Chagulani for organizing members and uh, they are seated somewhere and maybe 100, 200 members, then uh, I don't know what they're talking about. So they must also respect, if you say no public rally in terms of consultation, that's different. But if uh, maybe 100 people are seated somewhere and they're meeting, that's a consultative meeting. And uh, it should not be, it, should, it shouldn't be able to favor one person and it does not favor the other when it comes. Definitely, we know very well they are going to, and uh, you see, Electoral Commission could have said, yes, go ahead with the consultations. Police could have said, yes, do this. But you could end up seeing an order from President Museveni saying, no, he's not going to order, going to hold any consultation. So, we are, you know, at this point in time, we are expecting everything. And it, there is nothing new. So, or what next, uh, uh, before I bring in Rachel, what next for people power, just in case, okay, you have said the president may say that uh, there must be nothing done. Like, we've seen it in different concerts for... Uh, Bobby Wine and President says, or someone from the State House says, no concert is going to take place, and it happens. So what, hap what will happen this year, 2020, just a couple of days from now, somebody from maybe State House or the President himself coming up to say, you know what, you don't have that permission to go and do the job. You don't, you don't have to do consultations. We are not going to stop. Going to we are not going to stop. Just like they stopped Chagulani from singing, he has not stopped pro producing music. And uh, haven't you listened to Kasukali Keko? His music still comes out as much as they stopped him from doing shows on stages. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's gone and uh, he's become even smarter that he's been stopped from doing shows in Uganda. He has been doing shows abroad. So we are going to do everything we can. Yes, Uganda, they might stop him from doing consultations, but they will not stop him from doing campaigns when he comes to campaigns. We are not going to wither or give up because definitely one thing we know at this point in time, President Seven is going to do anything to frustrate Honorable Chagulanyi. But uh, from the Honorable Chagulanyi, I know, and sometimes who I talk to, he's, uh, he's more determined than ever. And uh, if he was going to stop or he was going to be stopped, it would have been then. But at this point in time, Ugandans, basically, Honorable Chagulanyi has no right. All right. Has no right to give up. Right. Has no right to say, I, I can't. He's basically Ugandans. Eight, we are looking, 40 million Ugandans are looking at this man. He's, we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel through someone who does not, who is not indebted to President Museveni and who is going to bring us the change we need because many people believe in him. So he does, there's no moment of retaliation. All right, Richard, or, take, then I'll go. I'm going to finalize with this story of you guys in the people power beating NRM members. Uh, we, may, we saw a story of uh, uh, Sarah's been talking about so much of uh, full figure and, of course, um, this lady, um, uh, Kusasira. Kusasira, yeah, Kusasira, who was also beaten by your people power supporters who claim to say that you want democracy in the country. First, give me the opinion on the issue of uh, Honorable Chagulani's consultation. Now, f this is a very simple question and it's a very simple answer. The majority of the people of Uganda are ready to liberate this country. I'm going to tell you why. Let him make one more mistake. One more. For, for what he, do you know why he's so fearful of Chagwan? Honorable Chagwan, one more mistake. He's going to, to lose everything. They are going to get out of power even before 2021. Second thing, I want to give you an opinion because I saw what happened in Masaka or, 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 on, on, on this beach where they were beating these people and sowing bottles. You, you, you know what Masaka is. I'm going to give you another example. Kalamoja. Have you seen what has been happening in Kalamoja this week? So, the people of Kalamoja, where they are stealing votes all these years, whom they are taking as very backward people, they killed one member of the NRM, the strong person of that NRM, maybe Nakapiripiri, something like that. The whole, the whole of Kalamoja has woke up. They burnt T-shirt of NRM. Kalamoja, there is a rebellion in Kalamoja, if you don't know. Yeah, right. Y know. Yes. Now, the whole country is not only in Uganda. 
I'm giving you an example. It's not only in Arua. It's not only in Masid. It's not only in Ibusoga. The whole country is going to bring him down. But, but, but no question, mistake. The question is, you say democracy, you say freedom of speech, you say freedom of association. But when you see these other members from the opposition, this, for this case, mm -hmm. NRM, Kanga, Genis, or doing their activities, singing or giving out money, you throw bottles against them. We have seen with Bebeku, we have seen with the, uh, now Kusasira, and uh, now Full Figure beaten up. Is that the representation of people? Let, me, let, me, let me give you my take. This, and I'm, I'm really, you know, it is really absurd that the likes of uh, Full Figure, the likes of Kusasira, I think Ugandans are stupid. Those are organized stunts. Kusasira and Full Figure have not accounted for the monies they collected from President Museveni. Full Figure was given 200 million. Tell me, since, since the time she got the money and now, what has Full Figure done to show President Museveni that really, really she deserved the 200 million or she's going to make her, you know, to give, her, to give him the win in Kampala? What has Kusasira done? She received the money, she received the car. So right now, they have to put up stunts. Those are organized stunts by the likes of Kusasira. What did Bebe Kul do? He organized the boys to throw bottles at him in Kololo. In reward, he got a new car. And, and he managed to finish up his house. Basically, if it wasn't for this Museveni and him giving money and the regime, he would have died in a rented house. So these are organized stunts by the likes of Full Figure, by the likes of Kusasira. They need accountability. Look at what this uh, stupid boy is doing, this failed musician. He's been singing for the last 20 years, but I had him, oh, he's going to march to Bobby Wine's place. Is it uh, Big Eye? Big Eye has, needs to account for the 30 cows he got. And first of all, he's a failed musician. He does not, I don't know any of his songs. None. I know every song by, by a fresh kid. I don't know any of these, his songs, but he's been singing for the last 20 years. Now he's beginning starts that he's going to walk to the home of Honorable Chagulanyi to take a letter. Or Wait, all that why is it okay? This, why, why is it okay for you people, part guys, to go on street and, and, no, but and do everything? They've, no, but it's not okay for, for, no. for other guys to, to go on, to do the same thing no. when you're advocating we, for we freedom not of stop, speech. We've not stopped them for demonstrating. In fact, it is people who belong to the opposition that have been stopped from demonstrating. You see all these guys, when you saw walk to corruption, you've seen them having, uh, you know, when uh, Full Figure is opening up the office, you've seen Bob Full Figure in Kiseka Market. Charles Free moved in Kiseka Market. If you want to see what happens, you saw the other time, Senyonyi, after the court, they went down to Kiseka Market. Police came after them, and they were running after them like as if they were, they were petty thieves. So they've had, they have the leeway to do whatever they want. But uh, the areas they were given to man are most of the most difficult areas because people in Kampala are politically elite. They know what is going there. You cannot fool people in Kampala. All right, so, so the so challenge, the uh, challenge, uh, let me finish up. Close, right. The challenge uh, full figure and Kusasila are facing right now, they've failed. I guess President Seven has asked them, okay, I gave you my money a month ago. I need accountability. They have failed to account for their money. So now they are putting up stunts. They pay small boys. They give boys 10,000, 2,000 to throw bottles at them, and now they are making noise, and they are, now they are, they are trying to put up a stunt, you know, to cover up the fact that they failed to perform. But this is not coming from opposition. People, we, are, we no longer have time for that nonsense. Bobby Wine has preached no violence. Yes, we know Ugandans are bitter, but we want to win an election through votes. We do not have guns, you know. We want to win an election outrightly. So I'm begging the likes of, of Kusasira, you need, if you need to find a better way to account for the money collected from Seveni and Full Figure, you better perform. Stop your stupid stance of, you know, paying some people to throw bottles at you and then you start making noise for Richard, us. Richard, you take on uh, the issue of uh, full figures, uh, your, your, your members uh, from within people. Yeah, but power, it, that, uh, that, 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 this full figure does not take us anywhere. She is a, she, I, don't, I don't want to... Well, she, she is a citizen no, of Uganda. Yeah, she is a citizen, but she, she, she's, she a, she's a hooligan of no use to us anymore. But let's focus on winning the election. Let's focus on gender, we call it what, gender mandarin? Because if you see this man, the, one, the, the man they've put in charge of the local government, this Majesi, is going to manipulate the districts and the, uh, the local government to create more seats for the ANRM so that they have a majority. We must be careful to make sure that we put everyone there as a coordinator in this place. The second th thing we have to look at is the Mugisha Muntu issue. I'll focus on it again and again. Please make sure the people power 
does not belong and discourage the, 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 the Ugandan people to join the Mugisha moon the so-called movement. He, he's, he's, <laughs> yeah, look, look it's, there, it's not there for the good right. of, the, of, of people power. It's there to make sure that people power does not get a majority. What we want, we don't want a scenario as what happened in, in Congo. All right, That's so my right, final take. Uh, all right. So I want to thank you guys. Uh, 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 you know, 2020 is now beginning. What do you see, people power? Just a little bit. Uh, you are a supporter of people power. Richard, you are a supporter of people power. So what um, do you see, people power in 2020? 2020, for me, I would, uh, one, I want the people power supporters and all Ugandans who are ready for change. I'm encouraging them. Don't be scared when that money comes. I know definitely bribes are going to start uh, being leashed out. Collect that money, it belongs to you, but exactly know where you're going to cast your vote. And uh, people definitely should be more vigilant. And, uh, you know, so much is going to happen 20, from 2020. Either Ugandans are going to be killed or people are going to be arrested for no reason. A lot is happening. There is a lot of theft rap happening right now in Uganda. A lot of, you know, people, people you saw a lot of break-ins towards Christmas. But uh, let, let's know that uh, the change we really need, we are nearing the change we need. And it is going to entirely, deep, you know, we have the power to cause the change we want. And for the members who live in the diaspora, entirely you control how people you vote back home. And I'm really glad that for this time we have members of the diaspora like the involved in the politics of Uganda. Please, before you send any money for school fees, people are going to be demanding money for school fees from you. Before you send your money from, for school fees, you need to reassert. I'm giving you this money for school fees. I'm working in winter conditions. Who are you supporting? All People, right. they must understand that uh, through tough times. If someone still, if your family members who depends on you still believes Prism 7 is good, they can as well go and collect it, school fees for their children for Prism 7. All right, so Don't so be afraid to cut them off. Don't be afraid to cut them off. Your movement, you support people. Uh, point uh, point uh, point. Uh, I've seen Museveni mobilizing the army, the local defense, and is going to do whatever it takes to stay in power. But remember, the people power, we are analysts. We see what is going to happen, then we determine the future. The people power movement in the diaspora, if they are listening to us tonight, they must wake up. We must mobilize the diaspora. We are sleeping. We are just watching what is in Uganda. The defense of this country in a turmoil is going to come from the diaspora. We haven't mobilized enough. There are no town hall meetings. We, everything we depend on Honorable Chagwa. And, and next time he's going to come here and pass by. Then we come out in big numbers. We must mobilize ourselves. Then call him for a show when we are already moving. So that we are in position to defend this country in a turmoil. That's my last no, yeah, like I said, man, all right, guys, so uh, I, I want to thank you uh, for, for all your discussion and uh, being with me uh, throughout this year. It's, it's been really a very tough year. We've had a lot of activities uh, in and out of uh, the studios. We've discussed a lot of things. And we, our viewers, we, we thank you so much for being with us throughout this year. Now, one thing we can promise now, on behalf of Campfire TV, there are six other more shows coming up at uh, 2020. So you'll be in a position to watch these shows on, on, on Facebook that you've not been watching uh, via Facebook platform. So we'll, we are working hand in hand with a technical team to make sure that these shows can be aired on Facebook. So you'll be in position to watch them, entertainment and all other things. So uh, we thank you always for watching Uganda at Crossroads. You have made this show big. You have made our discussions interesting throughout this year. And the coming 2020, we promise to advance more on our discussion as most of the things we'll be doing. So. Thank you so much. Now, the year is ending. Uh, the question is, did you fulfill the things you had to do in 2019? And if you didn't, what are your plans for 2020? Uh, I should say right now that most of the things I planned personally to do in 2019, at least 80%. So I'm taking the 20% to 2020. So, but have a great week and happy new year 2020. See you next Saturday, our first Saturday of the year. Have a great time. Bye.